Hi, it's Bastian Bax, and today we are here in my studio in Barcelona. I'm going to try to explain how I made that beat. Um, this is the second track of my latest EP on Jamie Jones' label Hot Tracks, and uh, it's probably my favorite track of the, the whole EP. So, yeah, let's see how, how I made it. I usually never know what I will make when I'm making music. I'm just trying some different stuff randomly and trying to find the, the sparks that are appearing accidentally while I'm working. And in this case, it was uh, this specific loop. I think it was from the, the Classmatic library, but I'm not sure. It sounds like this. Nothing special, but I liked um, the cobble so much and also this kind of low bergs. But um, one thing I learned after all these many years making music is that the, one of the most important decisions that you can make if you want a clean mix and a powerful master is um, try to be super, super strict with the quality of your samples and um, the sounds that you are using. So when I found this loop, I knew that the groove was good, that there was this cobble. It was so interesting, but I needed to clean it. So the first thing I made was to clean it. I separated the, the perks, the low perks that you can find um, in this channel. You can see the difference from the original one. Yeah, I detune it and um, I clean it a little bit. Um, I use a lot of this plugin. It's um, called Shifter. You can find it here on uh, modulation, this one. Um, it makes interesting, weird effects. You will, uh, I will show it later. Um, and then here we have some EQ, nothing special. And um, shaper box um, that it's uh, doing a bit of work on the on the panning on the sides. Um, if you don't use shaper box, I, I strongly recommend it. It's crazy. It's having like different modules, mm, time based. So you can control the filter and it's so visual. You can control the pan, the width of the sound and also the volume. So you can do your sidechain with this. Super, super useful, super creative. Um, so yeah, when I cleaned this, uh, these perks, then I had the cobalt that was my favorite part. So I just separated it and um, I had it here. It was just, if you, you see, I detuned it, I cleaned it, and um, I also applied this chain. What I'm doing here is basically work on the stereo. And then this plugin from Waves, really, really useful. It adds some color, some like, it's a really, really specific compression here because it, it gives some kind of push to the middle um, that I like. Again, a shaper box. In this case, using the compressor. It's al also having a compressor. It's an amazing plugin. To be honest, with years, um, I'm using less and less plugins. I remember when I was starting making music, I was using plenty of plugins. And now I'm just selecting these few ones that I really, really use and I try to master them. I try to know how to use them like perfect, you know, and um, with time I found out that it's better to know how to use one tool for many, many, many things than having like one million tools that you don't barely know for what you have them. So yeah, Shaperbox is one of them. When I had this, like, this group from here. It's just a loop with a bit of atmosphere here. Just a clean sample from library, nothing special. When I had this, I knew that I had something special. And then what I do, once I have, once I have like some kind of 
drum groove that it's interesting enough um then it's when i add the kick drum most of the people is always interested in the kick drum it's nothing special <laughs> what i do is honestly i steal it um i i don't remember which track i used here but if you go here you can find it uh it's uh Kanks with Shadow Child. Um, sorry about that. And thank you for <laughs> thank you for the kick drum. What I did is um, just I filter. If I turn the filter off, you can see some. You can hear some some sounds from the original song. And then I change the uh, I change the um, the pitch, like minus one semitone. The original it's something like this point here filter it then i added the drum bus this drum bus plugin is a native plugin from ableton i love it it gives some um, like a bit of distortion so i use it with really really low dry wet setting so yeah when i found the kick drum and i added this when i have this groove i know that i'm into something i know i can play is this kind of groove that you can play for 10 minutes you know and uh, the dance floor will move so um, then it's all about to find a nice uh bass line and um some vocals and samples that will create the hook of the whole track but I strongly, I strongly believe that the the most important part of a song is its groove, at least for house music, and this is what I make. So, um, I was listening to the groove over and over, and I tried to find a nice bass line. For bass lines, I use the Spectrosonics plugins. Um, for me, there is nothing quite close to it in terms of sound and uh, as you can see I have a uh, Moog sub 37 uh, have an ovation pick but I don't I I'm almost never using them um, JP08 it's super good to make uh, bass lines and I am almost never using it I'm always using the Spectrosonic suite both Trillion and Omnisphere are amazing plugins um, and here It, it sounds so fat so I just needed some simple notes because the groove was interesting enough if you are making a too complex bass line um, with a already interesting and complex groove everything will fight so when you have something like this kind of groove that it's uh, pretty solid by itself, just don't complicate yourself. Just find the root of the track and um, add some sub, like some glue to the to the beat. But don't don't go too complex. Don't use like um, you know MIDI generators like what's the name um, like Sting or something like that that everyone's using nowadays. I love to use it sometimes, but when you have this kind of groove that it's uh, interesting enough, you don't really need it. So what I found was super, super simple bass line. It's, uh, it's making this kind of pitch band effect. It's not really musically correct, but uh, who cares you know if it sounds good um i spent some some years of my career to to worry about uh, my music to be musically perfect and i lost some soul so now i don't i don't care i just find what is interesting uh to my ears and play with it um what i did in the master chain actually this is pretty interesting because now you feel how it sounds if I turn on the, the, the EFX chain, <laughs> it, 
it goes actually down. I mean, I told you Trillion is an amazing plugin. It's too powerful. So what I need to do is to take a bit of pressure out of it. So it's just a bit of um, saturation here, um, distortion. So um, I can add a bit of high um, harmonics um, on the on the soup baseline, um, but not too many, <laughs> you know. Uh, so what I do is uh, I add a bit of saturation here, then I cut the extra harmonics here. Uh, compressor doing sidechain with the with the bass drum, and then I have this really interesting plugin from Fab Filter. It's called Volcano. It's the the third version for me, the the best. Um, it's it's just a distortion for specific parts. It's like an EQ where you want to boost some specific frequency. With this one, you you can boost it, but also distort it. So it's really really interesting. It makes a difference. Um, then I have shaper box to control the extra side chain because I don't really want the baseline to be present in this very first moment where the fat kick is sounding. And, and then uh, limiter and uh, just a bit of control of the of the volume along the track. Super simple. Then I found these perks here. It's called dirty perks <laughs> because it's quite dirty to be honest. I did nothing here, it's just uh, pretty simple sound that I found somewhere. Um, what else? We have here these perks. Just a bit of EQ here. And uh, I use a lot the utility. As you can see, I use a lot of native plugins. Um, I don't complicate myself anymore. And I use utility to open the stereo image of the sound. Uh, it makes a difference. Like this too narrow. If here it goes like, it only works when, when again, when the sound source is good enough. If you don't have stereo information, this is not gonna do nothing. But the original sample was having enough stereo information in there. You just need to boost it. What else? Uh, this is only giving some color. Um, then what I love, once I have like the core uh, of the track, um, then I don't like to add too many stuffs because if the information that you are having there is solid enough, you don't want to complicate yourself too much. Just add what it really needs because sometimes uh, we are like crazy about adding layers and layers and layers. But then when you mute them, you try to mute them and you don't feel the difference, especially when you listen to them in your car or, or, or on, on the iPhone, um, like not the best sound systems, you know, you are here in, in the studio and uh, you feel every detail, but most of the times people will listen to your track in, in, in more simple sound systems. They will not tell the difference. So just get rid of of all the known and known essential information, you know, just um, focus on the solid core of the track and just add some bits of really interesting stuff. If it's not interesting, just get rid of it. So now let's talk about the vocals, the vocals of the track. Um, I found this sample and it was there already. I mean, when I found it, um, I knew it was interesting enough. Uh, I knew it was special enough. So what I did was to, to add some color. This plugin uh, from here is a delay. It started with, 
but with a really really short setting a uh, short time setting um, that is giving the stereo image uh, again CLA vocal for I use it for most everything I don't care if it's the vocal or not um, and then what the, I uh, added here on the vocal group was this chain it started with, it started with a beat. that really makes a difference and uh, what what is uh, happening here this is a delay but it's doing nothing it's just uh, automated here for the it's changing over the tracks to give a bit of movement what's making the whole thing here is this plugin from MOOC um, it comes uh, I think it came with uh, when I bought the the real thing uh, it's some kind of flanger or uh, I don't really know it gives some movement to the um, to the audio and also what I love is the the distortion that it's having it's amazing so you can it started with a tell the difference here it started, it started. what I also like to do when I have a really interesting uh, vocal is to double it I duplicate the the track um, exactly same settings uh, but I um, I put it uh, like one octave down in this case uh, uh, I also added this plugin um, I said yeah it's from isotope uh, it's called doubler and it's actually it's doing exactly this it's doubling the the, the sound it it sounds like like you are having two voices instead of one so it it makes a difference it gives more body to the sound um it sounds more interesting and especially uh, when you are playing them uh, on a big sound system it makes a big difference uh, otherwise vocals can get a bit lost in the mix what else uh, I have this <laughs> this track from here is just uh, you know I love to sample other tracks I have to be honest um, and um, I'm not uh, shy about it I don't feel shy about it um, and what I do is just I just chop random sounds from tracks that I like and I tune them to match the the key of my track and they just place them randomly to make some kind of interesting sounds in this case for example the most interesting one I found was this one it's just uh, some kind of weird vocal process I, I don't even know what I did with this one I just put some weird effects in on on it I resample it and in the end I just come with a extra layer of something interesting and when you put it alongside the vocals it you get this interesting effect it uh, it gives some information in there you know okay let's go um, what else the synth sound that appears on the second break everything comes from this sample I turn off the effect chain nothing interesting here <laughs> what I did was to get rid of most of the notes and just cut one of it and um, I just again auto field they're always um, well at most always using uh, native uh, Ableton plugins in this case uh, this auto filter uh, let me turn it on one my one auto filter is giving here this um, extreme EQ effect and also with some movement most of the people is uh, forgetting that auto filter is actually a plugin that uh, modulates 
filters. So it's really interesting if you dig around um, uh, the its presets, if you explore a bit, um, it's uh, having something really, really interesting. Then the other scent that we have is this one from the drops. In this case, the sound was already there. Um, I think that the only thing that I did with this one was to clean the last bit of the sound. Oh no, look at that. There was more information in there. Huh. We don't need all this. <laughs> so I just made this. Again, my friend CLA, give some color, some EQ here, Volcano tree. I was not lying. I was always, I'm always using the same, always over and over. Just keep it simple. That's my life motto. And um, yeah, from here, you just have the classic uplifter effects, snares silent sound more snares risers and then you have this um, like kick drum doing this uh, effect this rise effect I always use the Roland TR8S for this um, <laughs> Honestly, I love this machine, but I only use it to uh, create buildups. Like it, if I do it like now, I'm always having like it set for the buildup moment. You know, it's like a complex RMX 1000. Um, I also love it to um, find the uh, high hats and stuff like that that I haven't shown it because uh, you know it's a classic layer. Uh, it's zero really interesting. You know, it's the sample some uh, tier 8 sound and, and that's it. There's nothing special in there. And that's pretty much it. Uh, as I said, my way of working is really, really simple. Um, I hope you found some interesting bits of information and inspiration in this video. And if you haven't yet, go buy my AP on Hot Tracks because um, I think it's a good one. Thank you for joining me.